I'm Ludwiga. Today we are so super psyched. We have Shelby Kennard, AKA the diabetic foodie, right here in our split screen joining us. And um, we are so excited. She has been a wonderful partner to us and for the benefit of all those um, out there who want more information and wonderful recipes um, as someone living with diabetes. And she's a pro prolific author. Um, she actually partnered with us on a book that we did um, called Living Life to the Fullest with Diabetes. And it's her recipes in this ebook that's free and downloadable. And in addition, I'm just bragging on her, just <laughs> talking all about her. As you should. You know. <laughs> but she also um, has written some books. One that um, is called the, the Pocket Carbohydrate Counter Guide. Let's see if I can actually get it so you can read it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is such a handy reference, really, and resource in terms of figuring things out, how to measure things, um, you know, and uh, it's, you can even speak to it if you want to. Um, sure. It's basically things I've learned over the last 20 years of living with diabetes. So just tips and tricks to help you with the food piece of it. Right. And it is really helpful. And, and we did, in fact, I wrote a book review. Um, so I um, want, we're going to reference that in terms of our blog and, and uh, some of the things that I learned, thanks mm -hmm. to your good book. And then the coolest thing, which is kind of one of the things we're focusing on today, is that you actually wrote a cookbook using an, the Instant Pot. Good, yeah. For those living with diabetes. Oh, Woo! Oh, look at that. And yeah. even though diabetes is in the title, I would say it's for anybody who wants to eat healthy. I don't think you have to have diabetes to use the book, so. And I, I'm not someone who is living with diabetes, but I am someone who's very sensitive to needing to live healthy and to choose healthy recipes. And I found this cookbook to be, and there are recipes I've tried and written about um, from this that are um, really delicious and handy and um, doable. Yeah. I think my criteria is that, you know, it has to be tasty, has to be visually appealing, mm -hmm. and it has to be doable. You know, if it's too complicated, right? I mean, are you ever gonna do it again? <laughs> so you did a wonderful job of, uh, and actually all of your recipes, the things that we're trying out today, I don't think are specifically in your cookbook, but um, the beans maybe are the beans in your cookbook. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, other ones aren't, but they're always, you know, very straightforward. They're not confusing to follow. Um, and so they make it doable for folks like us who want to eat healthy and um, address whatever you know, health issues we may have. Because really, it is about eating healthy. And they're really good. And I will say the versions that we have done that are Shelby's versions are always, they're tasty. They they work. They're just, they're really great. And it's so. funny how they look so beautiful on the <laughs> It's just don't I? Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask you, how did this happen? This, you know, a cookbook, a cookbook that was specifically for for an instant pot. Well, the funny thing was, so we bought, you know, I I'm not an early adopter of new appliances. And so, but I had so many food blogger friends that were just raving about instant pots. And I finally got one on a Black Friday sale or Amazon Prime sale or something. And it sat in a box in our kitchen for months. <laughs> my husband took it out of the box and said, we're going to use this today. <laughs> and we made, I think, chicken curry, something like that. And we said, OK, let's figure this thing out. Well, then I was given the opportunity to do a book. So I think I had cooked in mine maybe three times. And then I had to do 88 zero. Uh, um, so, so I learned a lot in those two months. I think we had two Instant Pots going about eight hours a day for wow. seven days a week for two months, just doing stuff, trying stuff, retrying stuff when it didn't work. Right. Uh, so, so yeah, it was kind of trial by fire. So we got an Instant Pot, as you know, because of you, because we were having a conversation and we knew that you were doing this cookbook and we're all excited. And I, of course, love supporting wonderful people. And so I thought, well, I'm definitely going to want to try this out. 
And so we talked to you about it and you gave us the advice that definitely get one that has the yogurt button. Right. And so we got one that has the yogurt button. Have you have you used the yogurt? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it was because you said your husband makes yogurt regularly that I oh, I'm gonna do that. That was really the impetus for me. But we so, yeah, yeah, but we, we will, we will. We we've been yeah. covering. I mean, he, he made some he made some last night, in fact. I mean, you put in a specific kind of milk, it has to be ultra filtered because you don't want any bad stuff getting in your yogurt. Oh. And you add in a little yogurt just as a starter, kind of like sourdough bread, you have a starter. This is um this is the brand of milk, actually. Oops. Oh me over there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, sure. oh yeah, okay, got it. Ultra filtered. Um and um, you put in a little yogurt to start it, and I think uh, I think he puts in uh, vanilla extract. Yeah, vanilla. So you can kind of flavor it without adding the sugar, you know. Right. So that's what I like about it. Uh, and then you put it in the pie. We usually do it overnight, or we he. <laughs> and you you start it up, and we start it before we go to bed, and then eight hours later we get up in the morning, and you know basically uh, you put it in the refri refrigerator for a few hours, and then you got nice thick creamy. Wow, yogurt. that's and is it thick like Greek yogurt, or is it thinner like a it's traditional thick. yogurt? Yeah, and, and if, if you want it a little thinner, don't cook it eight hours, you know. Or oh, you know. so the longer you cook it, the thicker it gets. We made the mistake of it was some reason the, the thing was set to two hours, and uh, we let it, we didn't notice it and let it go for two hours, and it's like, this is really thin, and then we realized, okay. We <laughs> okay, okay, got it. So, so, so you conquered, you, you ended up getting an instant pot, you had the opportunity to do it. Do you, did you find in doing all these recipes and becoming an expert with it, that it was uniquely um, helpful for those living with diabetes or wanting to cook healthy? I think, I think so. Well, clearly, um, you know, portion control is important to us. Um, and Man. one of the things I like about it, you can kind of cook in big batches and then you can freeze in portion sizes that you know you should eat. Or, or just put it in the refrigerator in portions. So, so then you're not tempted to eat too much. You've already so what I'm is batching, batch cooking. So yeah, batch one of the things that we've discovered with it is that batch cooking is really convenient with the Instant Pot. Right. And then right. budget and friendly right. because a lot of the things that you cook, can, you know, because you're batch cooking too, it ends up making it more economical. Would you exactly. say that's true in your experience? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And another really nice thing is, you know, we have to kind of watch the carbs that we eat. And and generally, you know, we want to pick good carbs and high fiber carbs and, you know, good, you know, good carbs. Um, and basically the Instant Pot is great at cooking whole grains. Yeah. So exactly. and yes. why do you not eat whole grains? Well, because they take so long to cook, right? So right. Exactly. They don't take that long. And plus you buy a bag of dried beans as opposed to canned beans it's a whole lot cheaper so right um, so that's another thing and i think it keeps um it keeps uh, uh proteins kind of juicier so like you don't have to eat the high fat proteins to keep you know make sure your your meat is moist so i think that's another because it cooks under steam sort of um right. so, so i think that's another advantage for people with diabetes they don't have to um uh you know buy the high fat cuts of meat so. Okay. So another thing that we've kind of had a debate about is time savings. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the Instant Pot does in fact save you time? I think so. It, it may not save you as much time as you think because you do have to factor in the fact that the pot has to come up to pressure and then you have your cook time and then you have to release the pressure. So if you see a recipe that says it's 20 minutes of cook time, you're not going to be eating in 20 minutes. Right, right. So you have to factor that in. But you can, um, if you set it for 20 minutes, you can disappear and go off and do something else. You don't have to watch the pot. Or unlike a slow cooker, you have to remember to do it in the morning. Right. And, you know, so you have to plan ahead and then you have to wait six, seven, eight hours. Um, so I would say most recipes you can do in under an hour. So you can decide what you want to eat, set the pot, disappear for an hour, come back and you got dinner. So, so I think that the real thing that we've discovered in doing this is that certain things that take a long time, like the grains you were talking about, or for instance, we did artichoke hearts last Artichoke. Night. Polar. 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 
yeah. hearts, but whole artichoke, sorry. And oh, we did those in the Instant Pot. And those things that take a long time, it actually does save some time to do it in the Instant Pot. I think it's when you're doing an actual recipe where you're, you're you know, adding various ingredients and putting it together as opposed to whole grains or beans or artichokes that yeah. um, they, it may not seem like you're saving as much time with a recipe as you do, but you can walk away and do something else because it's not gonna burn, it's not gonna, you know, it's doing its own thing um, as opposed to something on the stovetop that you might have to watch and be more aware of. Right. You know, exactly. and you don't have one pot to clean up, you know, unlike, you know, even a slow cooker, you usually got to have to saute on the stove and then you have to move everything to the slow cooker. So you got at least two pots you got to clean up. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so we've now convinced everyone, don't you think, that the instant pot is awesome. And so now we're going to actually do something. And it's one of the recipes that you've shared on your website and um, that we've now shared on our blog that's a guest blog from you that's about cooking beans, just plain old beans. And then we're gonna show how you can make a lot of recipes out of it. So, so here we are, we have our instant have pot. Have your beans. <laughs> <laughs> so the really great things of, about beans is that you don't have to remember to soak them ahead of time. Oh, how wonderful is that? Right in the pot. And also, what's what's one of the negative things about dried, I mean, about canned beans? High sodium, right? Huge so if you dry beans yourself, you can control the amount of salt. Mm -hmm. um, I don't... Well, these it, it, are Goya. These actually, Walter went on a, a real hunting expedition. We had to find trouble our finding black, black beans. beans. I, I, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. And we found them... Walmart? Was it Walmart? I think it was Walmart, yeah. and it was like you know a dollar twenty nine for a pound. Oh, whatever. It was, it was wonderful, incredible. Yeah, I will say, you know what? I have to confess, this is the first time I've ever cooked fresh whole beans like this. Oh, I've never had it. And, and I did test it out earlier this weekend because I wanted to test out some of the other recipes. I got to tell you, I am an instant convert. This is fabulous. So you have awakened me. To how yeah. cool this is, Shelby. Well, I mean, yeah. they, they taste cleaner somehow. Oh. They look beautiful. I mean, the color is just a wonderful. They're so reach. pretty. Black it doesn't go gray. Really they don't, you know, They're kind yeah. of shiny. And, right. Wait, okay. Yep. So we're going to put them yep. in the pot. So you, so you rinse them. You rinse them oh, off. Right? I did rinse them. Sorry. I did. I did. Okay. I did yeah, so a good time because I knew we had a couple of things we wanted to do together. So right. I, um, I put the beans in. Oops. Yep. Yep. Right. And, and then. then Five cups of liquid, so some combination of broth, stock, and water. So you can use all broth. You can so use I all did water. chicken broth this time. I did it with water last time because we were going to cook something that I didn't think wanted to have broth. So, um, broth. so I'm I'm doing chicken broth this time. So I'm, they're going to really be yummy. So that was four cups. Yeah, and what I usually do, I usually have an open. Yeah, so you need five cups. So, yep, you got five cups. Yeah, I usually have a carton of um, broth open in the refrigerator. So I, I use that and then make up the difference with water is usually. What oh, I do. there you go. I could have done that. I didn't think about that. What a great tip. Uh, you know, this will be, yours will be better. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And you take uh, just a tablespoon of olive oil and drizzle it over the top. And why and do you do that? You do this because it controls the foam. The beans will foam up when they cook, and the foam will get up into the lid of your pot. And oh, make it's good. really, it's really important. <laughs> okay, good to know. We got that done, and okay. that's all you need. So then, close it up and set it on high pressure for. So Walter, I'm I'm gonna really try and do no, this no, no. all by myself. Right. No, am I doing it wrong already? We are now. There you go. Okay, and then I have to twist it. And then okay. I put it on ceiling. Little right? valve on ceiling and not venting. You know, that's that's important. The little valve on I top. push the pressure cooker button. Yeah, pressure cook. And then it says normal, Walt, but I'm supposed to have it on high. Oh, it says high. Okay. Yep. And then 25, right? 25, yep. Okay. And, and then that's as simple as that. I did it. I'll put it right here. By the way, you know, so that kind of you know confuses some people you don't have to push it in and then hit start it just it's beeping so you did it right yeah <laughs> so basically it's going to come up to pressure that's probably going to take 15 minutes or so then you'll have the 25 minutes of cook time you'll hear the pot beep when the 25 minutes is up 
and then the clock will start counting up. And that will let you know if you've walked out of the room, you come back in, you'll know how long it, it was since it finished so, cooking. So somebody said once it's done, it's important to hit cancel and then let it do. But if you just leave it by itself, isn't it turned off at that point and it's just telling you how long or is it? Kind of in a, I think it's in a keep warm sort of mode. Okay, so, so you can hit cancel if you want to, but you know, it depends on the recipe, whether yeah. that's a good idea or not. So for the um, beans, you want to cancel it because you really yeah, don't need to keep yeah, them warm, right? So, right? Okay. And want, so there's a there's a difference between a natural release and a quick release. So mm -hmm. a natural release, you just let everything sit in the pot and until the little valve comes down and and you know the the uh, pressure has been relieved and it's safe to open the pot. So and that takes quite a bit of time, right? right? That may what, take that twenty that, minutes or so. It takes to do that. Yeah, it depends on the volume of food that's in there and oh, that's okay. how long, you know, it was hot, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it, it, it varies in how long it takes. Okay. But generally, if you're naturally releasing something, you can just let it wait 15 or 20 minutes and then you can quick release the rest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. And really, we're probably going to uh, prepare the other um, recipe we're going to do next. And this will be done at the end of it. And it's as simple as that. And I think that's kind of what we wanted to show folks that we just put three ingredients together, turn the thing on. It's going to mm -hmm. take 20, well, 20 plus minutes because it's got to get the pressure up, as you said. Right. Probably right. about 40 and then another whatever. Yeah. So we may not be on, but we'll see. I, okay. I we can, yeah. uh, show you what they're supposed to look like. If, you oh, know. Good. A good idea. A good idea. Yeah. So yeah. magically, we're going to transition to the next phase, which is we're going to actually make some recipes or a recipe. We, mm -hmm. over the weekend, tried out, um, there's this fabulous brownie recipe made with beans and that was really what got me curious about it it's really good oh my god it's, they're so it's good. Really good i know so these are and they're spicy they're sort of like mexican uh spicy brownies because they've got what they have chili powder in them and, a little cinnamon. Yeah. and they look just gorgeous i hope everyone can see how they're, they're nice and moist dark yeah. chocolate and right. um it just, it really, they, Cynthia loved them, we oh. love them, and, and we all have different palates, so it and was I a great taste test. We have, we have done a different black bean brownie in the past. And not, and not the same. Yeah, they, they were just sort of stodgy. These were actually light, really flavorful. Moist. I mean, just a great flavor. So I was very When you were eating beans, if, if somebody had, if you didn't know, I mean. Yeah, I would not have a Not, not at good. all. And, right. and oftentimes there is, you know, there, an aftertaste or a taste that makes you feel, you know, you could taste the bean, not with these at all. Yeah, and you it have it on great. your website, as spicy black and white bean brownies. You don't have to do the black and white beans. You can do just the black beans, as you say, in the recipe. But, um, you know, we we also made this available in the blog. That's your guest blog on our blog. So people can access it. And and why is that good? I mean, I think we should talk about why making a brownie with beans is a good idea. Well, you're adding fiber, right? So anytime, anytime I crave something sweet, it's like if I can add fiber to it, I feel like it's okay. You know, so or more, I mean, well, clearly there are exceptions. But it, it's sort of like um, if I eat sweet, I make sure it's got fiber. What's got more fiber than beans? I mean, right. Hard to yeah. imagine. But it, it, so therefore, it really helps you manage your sugar, right? Right. And it helps it's your, too. So it's your, your, your dessert has protein. So Right. And so for anybody, that's great, right? Mm -hmm. So not only are we talking about fiber, but we're also talking about protein. We've actually kind of been sneaky in terms of creating a dessert that is really healthy for you, right? So with yep. this wonderful recipe. I, I think people who don't like beans or don't think they like beans would like the brownies. So. Yes, I, so I definitely agree with that. I, I, really I am do. curious if you use the black and white beans, these are so beautiful and so dark. Is that, does it do, are they a little bit grayer or lighter? Or How does it change? A little bit, but not much. In fact, the black and white beans kind of look more like black beans after they cook. They okay. don't keep the black and white distinction. So, so 
Yeah, but they do. I think I think um, for people who don't like black beans, I think the black and white beans are a little less earthy. So I think if you're okay, no that's the reason then beans, it might be a good one to try. But they can be hard to find too. So yeah, yeah, they, yeah they are because we did the research to to do that, and uh, we and did expensive. find them. But they ended up being crazy. You know, I don't think people would regularly buy them. But for an experiment, it was a great. Right. And they're not and they're not a dollar forty nine a bag either. No. <laughs> Like 20 bucks for a bag. So, yeah. So, I think they're more exotic. Um, right. But, right. you know, they're uh, for the flavor and whatever. For, you know, we do a lot of experimenting in this kitchen. So, it's kind of fun to have that as yeah. an option. And they are fun. I mean, they're, they're cute. Oh, they're beautiful to look at. They're, the orca is what the beams were that we got. They were called orca. And you can imagine the black and white. That makes sense, right? So, yep. okay. So, we talk brownies. We talk why that's good and how tasty those are. And, um, now we want to do another recipe of yours with these, which is the black bean soup. And the reason why we're doing this is because once you've done the beans, the idea is that this, this you know, six cups of beans can actually translate into one, two, or three recipes. So it's not like it takes a long time to use up these beans. And right. So a pound, yeah, a pound of dried beans, you'll end up with about six cups of beans. And just as a frame of reference, a can of be a standard size can of beans is about a cup and a half, cup and a half, cup and three quarters. So think so, how many cans of beans you have to open up to get right. six cups, which is also, I mean, again, economic. Um, right. And then you've got them the way you want them. And then it's not that many. I think a lot of people feel overwhelmed. Oh my God, a pound of beans. What am I going to do with a pound of beans? And I think that's why I wanted to to do this ahead of time to, to really see, you know, how many recipes can you really and we actually are going to use our, the beans up in two, just two recipes because the brownies took like three-fourths cup of beans. And then um, the rest of the beans, which is about five and a half cups, should be six cups, but we're cheating a little bit, um, is going to go into the soup. Very forgiving recipe. So. <laughs> so the nice thing is, you know, there's a little flexibility here. Right, right. Um, but that's, you know, to, to do that, then you can see how simple that is um, with a, a batch of beans. So we're going to do black bean soup with cilantro lime cream. Sounds good. So first we have to see what the beans look like once they're done. So you're gonna share that with us. And then you're gonna walk us through um, creating the soup and the sauce that goes on top. Yep, 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 we're getting the beans. So my good, trust is good. <laughs> so um, we- And I will show you. Look what I'm doing. Look. Here we go. We're going to get to see him. Oh, she's got him. So, she's got so. him. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. We got it. So, this all is right. a, And this is, so this is a third cup because of my nice live spoon measure. Oh. And that's basically one serving. Uh, that's about 13 grams of carb right there. I'm sorry, okay. 16 grams of carb, 16. So, so. So that's what the beans look like when they come out of the pot. They're beautiful. They really are. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, and they're ready to roll. And it's, and you um, actually mentioned that you can freeze these. Is that right? So if you're not going to use them. I mean, there are only two of us in the house. And when you make a pot of beans, there are only so many bean recipes. You can, I mean, you know, you need a break from beans. Oh, <laughs> so we usually use maybe half the pot in different recipes, um, whether it's the black bean burgers or the soup or a dip or something like that, or put them on salads. Um, and then I freeze them in one and a half cup serving sizes. And that, that no, then I know that those packages in the freezer are a can of beans, equivalent to a can of beans. That's fantastic. Perfect. And so um, how long can they last uh, in the freezer? I think they're about three or four months in the freezer. Okay. Okay. So you really could uh, have them there for a while or get them I, I, That's probably, you know, that's the health regulation, but I don't know if it'd be. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. It's your own home. You can pick. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> These are our beautiful beans that we did the same way and that we have ready um, to start working on the bean soup. Okay. Yep. So, so we're going to, we're going to put the, let's see. We're going to so have you tapped, up, you tapped up your onion. Yes. So we have onion here. Yep. So we're so going to start with, do we put, um, do we put olive oil in before we put the? Yeah, since, um, yeah, basically, are you, are you using bacon? We are, but it's the turkey bacon, so it doesn't really have any 
Uh, yeah, I just have a spoonful of olive oil maybe in there and okay. bacon and the onion. Put that okay. in a pan okay. at medium heat. Do we want to do this? Can I sure. do things? Yeah, absolutely. And um, do we want to do just um, some spray or do you want to put some real olive oil in there? I'll do put some real olive oil. Okay. But I'll put a teaspoon. Yeah, I think. Perfect. Do a teaspoon. And then we're yep. doing the onion. That up and, oh, and the garlic. Should we put the garlic in with the onion? I usually like to start the onion and bacon first and okay. then add the garlic because um, the garlic can burn. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so, so I use the garlic for a little bit before I add the garlic. Okay. All right. So we'll do the onion and the bacon. And the bacon. And we did get the turkey bacon. We were able to find it. <laughs> oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so we were excited about that. And, it, and actually, and we have an uncured version now. We did a Simple Truth, um, you know, so it's the organic version, and they do an uncured, you know, like hickory smoked. So I was really kind of thought that was neat that there was a turkey bacon like that out there. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and some brands of turkey bacon are better than others. So if you've right. tried one brand and you think you don't like it, try another brand. I do think that is kind of tricky. Yeah, yeah. And if you if you want to make this a vegan recipe, um, you, can really can. Bacon, you can use vegan bacon. Or you can just hit it at the end with a little liquid smoke. Liquid smoke is actually oh, vegan and it gives you that. That would be good. Way. That would be good. That actually sounds really good. So, so how long should we do this? Just until they get a little clear or? Uh, the onions start season and they soften a little bit and your bacon starts to, you know, cook. Um, okay. Okay. So we're so cooking it, away. So five minutes here, cooking away. <laughs> So you can hear it. We're sizzling over here. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sizzling, yeah. sizzling. And um, how is it? You can't see you at all. I know. I was thinking I could probably move that a little bit. Yeah. Well, so well, it's great. Right. 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 Can you see I can't, it? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't that do it? Awesome. Nice kitchen. Thank you. We love our kitchen. That was, uh, you know, this house is pretty new and uh, to us. And uh, one of the things we loved about it was um, being cooks and all. It's a real kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. So now you can see cooking away here. Yay. So one more oh, garlic. Okay, so then we put the garlic in next, right? Yeah, we have to put the garlic in. Yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And then, and then um, after another couple minutes, stir in your cumin. Okay. Cumin, we're doing one teaspoon, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yep. So we're lo we are cumin lovers. We just love, love, love cumin. I love yeah. it. It's kind of a smoky, uh, you know, or earthy. Uh, complex. Uh, and it smells so good. I love the aroma of it. Yeah, and if you don't like it, I know, like my brother doesn't like it. You can use chili powder too. You know, if you don't like it. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. I mean, they're always solutions. They're always alternatives. Yeah, yeah. And that's the nice thing about this recipe. It's like you know, you can use whatever kind of canned tomatoes you have. You can use you know bacon or not, or you know if you've got garlic in a jar, you don't have any fresh garlic, that's perfectly fine. You know, vegetable stock, chicken stock, beef stock, whatever you got. Um, so it's it's pretty flexible and pretty okay, So we're gonna put the cumin in, is that good? Are we ready? Yep. Yeah. 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 Stir that around until you can kind of smell it. And it I do, it smells wonderful. So she wants yeah. it to be aromatic. Aromatic, yes. Right. Oh, I better start getting the Tomatoes. We did find the um, Rotel, the diced tomatoes, and green chilies. So we're yeah. gonna, we are actually gonna put that in the pot. I'm yep, so the yeah, those are good. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You like the fire roast ones? Are yeah. like we the ready to put this in? Is this good to put this in now, or will you wait? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, your onions look soft, then, yeah. then you're ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna dump it in. Roots smelling like it's got some flavor going on there. Yeah, one thing to note about the tomatoes, you don't want to drain them. You want the liquid to go in too. So. Right. And I didn't drain it. So. 
the thing. <laughs> it is true. Some yeah. recipes do call for draining it, so you have to pay attention to that part of the recipe. Exactly, and then uh, and then add in your broth or your stock. Okay, and it's about a cup and three quarters, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost six, two cups would be fine too. It's just okay. a little less two cups, yeah. Cup and three quarters, yeah. <clears throat> so, because it says 14 ounces, so right. we'll try and follow the recipe as best we can. So, we're using that chicken broth again that we used earlier for the beans. Mm -hmm. Using the same uh, yep. box of it. So, can yep. I yep. for you? Yep. Okay, and it goes. And now we just yeah. steep for a while. I mean, we're gonna let it simmer. Bring it to a boil. Stir it together. Bring it to a boil, and then you want to cover it and let it sit, cut the heat down and let it simmer for like ten minutes. Okay, so we're gonna let that do for ten minutes, mm -hmm. and then. Um, and in the meantime, the instant pot has started, right? And your well, it looks like your it's, beans are so yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, down, yep. So the beans are cooking. The beans are cooking. The soup is cooking, and then should we do the um, sauce and then sauce? change or show us what this might look like down the road? Yeah. Um, so, uh, sauce we, uh, sauce uh, a good idea. idea. Bowl here. I has a little extra few minutes. I better get that out of there. All right. I had I a little out. extra cumin floating around. Okay. So, for the the lime, the cilantro lime cream. We're doing so you're gonna do a quarter cup of sour cream, and if you didn't have sour cream, you could always use Greek yogurt. Ah, there you go, the yogurt you make in your instant pot. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, and um, kind of the juice of one small lime, which is roughly a tablespoon spoons worth. Okay, so that's what you do is you just do a whole lime, whatever that is. But it, yeah, a small one. You don't want to do a big honking lime. But, okay, yeah. all right, good point. Okay, so that's what was in this was I, we did four teaspoons, I think, of lime juice. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a tablespoon. And we we have discovered Lighthouse. Do you do Lighthouse, the um, herbs? No, I've never seen them. They're freeze dried. Okay. So they, um, they're, they're much fresher. I mean, they actually reconstitute. So mm -hmm. um, we didn't have, uh, unfortunately, cilantro is one of the hardest things for me to have in my kitchen. We yeah. had fresh cilantro. The hardest thing to grow in your garden, too. Exactly. So pretty soon in our garden, we'll have cilantro because we do grow it in the summertime. And it's it way better out there than it does in my refrigerator. So um, we're going to do a tablespoon of it, just like you use one for one with this. Oh, it is. OK. And um, so that's what's different about it compared to dry ice. So I'm going to put that I on. Have I have seen it in the Oh, yes, you could do that too. Absolutely. So this is what I go to in a pinch. But my husband hates cilantro, so we don't use it too much. Okay. All right. <laughs> He's one of those people that it tastes like soap. So. Oh, okay. Well, I guess. Genetically, oh. some people, cilantro tastes like soap. Really? Mm. I've never known that. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I'll believe you. <laughs> um, and then we're doing um, a half teaspoon of the Tabasco. And we actually yeah. have jalapeno. I was so impressed. I didn't know it actually says jalapeno on the bottle. I didn't yeah, know it was Basically, it's the green Tabasco. That's um, right. It's basically just to kind of give you a color variation because if you use the red stuff, you know, your soup is kind of reddish. And oh, I see reddish so this makes it a little brighter the cream oh, okay um, that's nice. yeah and i actually uh, i made this today and i didn't have any of the green tabasco so i used salsa verde in it. oh you know wait, we forgot to put the beans in there thing oh am i doing that now yeah because okay. the beans were supposed to go in the soup we forgot to add the beans right because we were supposed to do that when we did the tomatoes and oh, the we had the tomatoes yeah sorry about that no <laughs> problem i just realized they were still sitting here and it was like oops wait a minute oops. Supposed to have had those in the soup. Sorry. See, that's the beauty of doing your mise en place. You know when you've left something out because it's sitting there on the counter in front of you, you know? So, uh, you know, even if we weren't doing the Facebook Live, that's how I cook. because I get everything out and I get the measuring things. Cynthia can tell you because she always helps me get things organized. Um, yep. Because that, for that very reason, because I 
um, you get distracted if you don't have it all there, you know, then you're going, oh, I forgot ingredients. So I oh, recommend that. Really pretty with the exactly. Thing. Is it beautiful? Yes. And part of it, we're going to actually um, put in the um, food processor, right? So that we're going to actually um, make a sauce. Make a yeah kind of pulverize it so that it's yeah you, kind of, yeah you kind of take two cups of the soup and then you um yeah you can put it in a blender if you have a high speed blender or a um food processor and that just kind of thickens up and then you pour it back into the pot and so you've got a nice thick soup instead of a you know which you don't or, or we could do a, a submersion into a I think I wrote this recipe before those were, you know, popular. So. Yeah, I know, I know. So uh, fair enough, but that just shows you there are different ways of uh, going back getting the same. Yeah, and you know, if you don't have any of those, uh, potato masher will work too. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Just depends on what you have handy in your kitchen and, and how much aggression you need to get out. <laughs> so, okay, so we're imagining this is cooking. And the thing, you put the beans in and actually it's the whole thing. You you put two cups of whatever, of the soup um, as it's been put together in the food processor and then put it back into the soup. So it's right. like you're trying to get the beans out and do it. You're putting the whole, you're just putting two cups of that soup in, right? To thicken. Right. So you're letting the soup cook for like 10 minutes and then uh, with it covered, you're going to take the cover off, turn the heat off and let it sit for a few minutes because, you know, you don't want to put really hot stuff right directly into the, uh, and if you, you do use a blender, make sure you take the little thing in the middle out when you blend something hot otherwise it'll explode so you know that's what that looks like. Oh the blender? The yeah. okay. well yeah. putting the blender just I'm oh, the little blender. Oh sorry we're talking blender. Right. Yeah. And, and cover it cover it with a paper towel or something. Keep your hand up there but but the steam has to go somewhere when exactly. you're blending something hot. So you don't want anything exploding but, on you. But are we are we okay just using the, the submersion and just doing it in the Absolutely. Pot? Yeah, sure. For a minute sure. or you know, yeah. 30 seconds. Sure. Or, yeah. yeah, sounds like an easy you thing. Do it that way, and I'll show you the one I did in the blender, and we'll kind of compare textures. You know? Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, it's easy. So, hi, Kathy. Cynthia said that you're watching, so we appreciate it. So oh, thank you for those that are watching. And if you have any questions, Cynthia is on the alert today. So uh, she'll make sure we can uh, answer any questions for anybody who's online today. Great. Just want to mention that as we're going along here. And yeah. um, so are we ready? Should we show the end product? And sure, we can do that. I will ask my trusty assistant to help me. Oh, yes, the trusty assistant. We, we're very fortunate to have these teams on board here. Are. So here's our pot. Ooh. And again, live spoon. Live spoon. So is it about a cup, a cup and a half? Well, how much do you serve up? Now, a, cup, a serving's about a cup. That's about 40 grams of carb, but it has about 10 grams of fiber. So if that's too much for you, you can kind of use a smaller serving size. Okay. But see how, see how it gets thick? Yeah, that's yummy. Look at you that. know, and then I'm gonna drizzle a little um, cilantro cream on it. Actually, I think I'm gonna plop because mine looks pretty thick. But mine look pretty thick too. Yeah, you just plop it on top. And if you want it to be thinner, you can add more lime juice, or you can use um, a little less sour cream. So there you go. And if I had fresh cilantro, I would sprinkle it. Uh huh. On top. Good point. You could add a little freshness, or you could put some parts on Black beans look good, but you know, there we go. <laughs> it so, takes um, what what bowl are you using? I just was wondering. I am using what is this halsa? Halsa! Look at that. We got out just to be a counterpoint. We're going to eat ours in the vente. The vente. Nice. Yeah. So there we go. And we thought the soup would look particularly gorgeous mm -hmm. in our soup bowl. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed earlier, I used celebrate to put the beans in. Did you uh, oh, Miftokino. I, I thank you for doing that. We appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, so we have beans cooking over here. 14 minutes and ago. And we have soup over here and it's probably not cooked enough to do the immersion on it 
Yeah. Yeah. Just let it, let it go a little longer. It's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, then are you going to show us how delicious it, it tastes? Because. Oh, yeah. Over here. Okay. You have to get, make sure you get the cream. I like to just stir the cream in. Uh, oh, that sounds good. How, uh, how <laughs> spicy is it, you guys? Is it going to be spicy hot? Mm -hmm. How spicy is it? What do you think? Wow. It really tastes the lime. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If, um, if you like tart things, yeah, he's not as much a fan of tart oh, things. Okay. okay. <laughs> sounds good to me. <laughs> it's <sounds, laughs> so bright and kind of what we need in the spring. You yeah. Know, it yeah. sounds really good. So. Plus, he got the bite from the top. I should have stirred it in more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's happy. He's happy. So, so while we're sitting here, I want to tell you one other thing I like to do in the Instant Pot, or my husband likes to do. This is his second favorite thing to do. We make hard-boiled eggs in there. So typically, they're steamed, but he makes a pot of them at least once a week, and then we put them in the fridge, and we've got high-protein snacks ready, you know? But here's what you need. Something that looks like this. And it fits in the bottom of your pot, and you stand your eggs up. Okay. You can use the rack that came with it, but then the eggs are kind of on their sides, and they taste perfectly fine, but the yolks will kind of come out off center, you know. Okay. When you yeah, I hear you. Prettier, you need to stand them up when you cook them. But okay. you put them in, you put a cup of water in, and um, two minutes. That's it? <laughs> That end down, and then you quick release the pressure, right? Yeah, quick release the pressure. And they are, you don't have to do the water bath. You don't have to boil a big pot of water. I mean, they're fabulous. Wow, so, we're going to try this out too. This is yeah, highly recommend, highly recommend. And I you love using eggs for egg salad or sliced on salads or, as yeah. you said, as a quick snack. I mean, there's so many things you can do with eggs. Salad yeah. soise, one of our favorite things is, you know, because it's kind of leftovers you can have in the refrigerator and do that and add the eggs. So, boy, all these good things. Or deviled eggs. We did that on Easter. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get them on Easter this year, though. Yeah. They're hard to make for two people, you know. Well, of course, not really. I mean, we eat them, but. You know. Fair enough. This year for some reason, but it, and I've I've actually made them like you swirl in some guacamole. Mm -hmm. Wow, fun! Yes, I know you have a wonderful recipe for deviled eggs with the guacamole, which is healthy for you. So that yeah. we, we know that and delicious too. Yeah. And appealing, all those things, and doable. <laughs> and doable. That's right. That's right. <laughs> We're all about well, uh, we just love spending time with you. This is so much fun. Thank you for doing this oh, and sharing you. your expertise with all of us and uh, showing us how, you know, th there's nothing to be afraid of with the instant. No, not at all. I was terrified at first because I have memories of, you know, my mom's pressure cooker on the stove and you have to put it under the water and the thing might be afraid the thing is going to explode. <laughs> any part of that i think that's why the instant pot sat in the box as long as it did you know yeah. uh, but you know, we, it's, it's danger right yeah it's impossible for it to explode i mean it's got all kinds of safety mechanisms built in you can't open the lid if the pot's under pressure so um, right. yeah it's, right. it just, it's, just, it's really well made i mean it's solid dirty yeah. really wonderful yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm sharing recipes with us so that we could do this wonderful soup that we're going to have for dinner. We're going to have it. We're going to have a roll, and we're going to have salad, and we're going to have the soup, and that's going to be this perfect meal for us. We'll have a little leftover because we love leftovers for lunch. And so Walt and I, I think, we'll be able to get um, some uh, extra servings out of that for lunch. And, and the other thing that we yeah. did earlier with beans of uh, Shelby's were the burgers, and we didn't really talk about that. Right. Well, burgers are. I mean, they, you know, my, my goal is, is, and now I have arrived, um, to make homemade bean burgers that are delicious and um, that actually you can flip and they don't fall apart because for a while the, the recipes I was trying just, they didn't hold together at all. So there are a lot of tricks to making a good bean burger and you've, yeah, you've yeah. Yeah. and I really like when you make them putting an egg on top and then sriracha. You know? Oh, I know, I know. We so even need a bun. I know. Who needs a bun? Really, really good. So, um, so we did that and then these heavenly brownies where, you know, 
They are so good. We've already tried those, got to say. And they are so good. Um, I don't think those are going to make it to the freezer, you know. So, just saying. It goes in the freezer, but these are so good. Not going to make it to the freezer. Cindy is saying it's not happening. Not happening. So good. So, thank you for sharing your expertise, sharing these wonderful recipes, showing us how you know, one batch of beans can make many wonderful things and that we can freeze them and use them for our recipes down the road. Um, and the you, know, you have a wonderful cookbook. So if people are really into the Instant Pot, there's a, a, a wonderful cookbook just for that that you've created that people, we've referenced it. And so um, we want people to check that out. And I know you're maybe going to start sharing more of your expertise coming up here. So we're looking forward to more news from you on, you know, more cooking, more cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. Show me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to get, I want to get some cooking chat things going. So we basically cook alongs kind of like this, but imagine a bunch of people on zoom all cooking the same recipe really together. Fun. Like everybody. I, love this idea, Shelby. I really do. And I just think yeah. you would be wonderful at, you know, taking the mystery out, but creating the magic for people to have wonderful meals in the kitchen. So um, I think we're, we're voting yeah, for that. Totally. I think it's really wonderful. So yeah. thank you for joining us today. Oh, and thank you for having me. It was fun. Wait to try out this soup. We're going to do the immersion thing. Is it ready? Can we do the immersion thing as the final thing to I do? I haven't been track of time, so I don't I can't tell you. you it's been so I think it's so <laughs> so, well, We have... Um, you know, when you're cooks and you love to cook and you love sharing things. So Walter and I also have been married, you know, like 38 years. So um, we often can be on the same wavelength about something. So last Christmas, our gifts to each other for Christmas were immersion blenders. We, wow. <laughs> we have two of them. We have, we have one that we've used and one that's still in the box. That's right. Okay, well, I'm going to have one back, but uh, somehow I just didn't get done before <laughs> the world fell apart. So um, so anyway, uh, it is kind of amusing. So we have this big wampum uh, 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 immersion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember when they first came out, um, Emerald used to call them boat motors. You know? yeah, it is. Seriously, this is. It's like huge. So, uh, okay. try it out. All right. Uh, looking good. I mean, it's like practically done. I mean, it is amazing how fast that happens. And I think yeah. that's really all we need to do because that was yeah. probably about three cups worth. So, yeah. you can kind of see it, you know, and you can see it as you go and you can tell how thick you want it to be. Whereas if you take what? it out and put a spoonful in there, I'm going to stir it up. Oh, she's going to stir it up, put a spoonful oh, oh, in. Yeah. Oh. Oh, this looks beautiful, beautiful Shelby. Oh, good. And then let's see. We we really need a oh, one cup. We just uh, we'll do less than that. We're just gonna taste it right now and just pick one quick. And and we'll do this, and the two of us can taste it. Put a little tiny bit of um. Where, where did where does me? Yeah. Well, oh, you can come over here if you want to and try it out. <laughs> I, I thought we would just um try it so that. Nick Mix the, the cream in. Mix it in real good. Okay. You want to it with every bite. So can you see? We only did it like a third cup. No. <laughs> Just so we could try it out. Oh, Sin, here's your spoon. Okay, so I'm stirring that up. All right. The cilantro All right. cream. Right. Here you go, Sin. All right. So you're going to have to roll oh, it. Up. Oh. Mmm. You good? Mmm. 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 Mm. It has a kick to it, though. I'm yeah. yeah. It's so chill. It's a one, but I think with beans, you it's it, you know it makes sense to do that because beans inherently don't have a whole lot right going on. So uh, this is That's really good. good. One canvas, you know. So yep. I could. I even you got like it yeah. with the kick, huh? Yeah. All right, you've got a convert here. Look at that. I don't usually like things with kicks, Shelby, and I like that. Yay! The ultimate compliment, I'm telling you. All right. All right, so we're set for dinner, thanks to you. I do, so <laughs> we haven't eaten yet, so I'm ready. Yeah. All right, well, as, um, as we like to say, 
We are serving this up on La Briga tonight. We're doing it, we're serving up on uh, the Vente. You've got Hulsa going on. Yep. And um, next time, we want to remind people that May 26th, we're going to be doing a family friendly recipe that's do it your own shrimp tacos, which we think is a fun kind of thing to do for summertime. And that's going to be on May um, 26th at 5.30 on um, Tuesday, on, which is always a Tuesday and um, on Facebook Live yep. with Lip Liga. And, um, and now we're sadly going to say goodbye. And thank you again, Shelby, for your time and expertise and sharing. And thank you. Um, thank you. everybody to stay safe, stay well, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Take Thanks. care, everyone. Yes.